<clears throat> hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we doing today? Hope we all had a very nice week. I'd like to thank everyone for the tremendous response to last week's video. I, I think it's one of my best videos uh, for response, comments, and the amount of subscribes that I got in one week. I think I got over a hundred. Um, I'm, I'm glad it was very helpful to all of you out there. So let's just jump right into part two. Um, the little mock up here, actually on the Renai guys tankless display board, which worked out perfectly. Um, just a little demo of a piping arrangement. We're going to simulate this right here is the um, actual um, vacuum. And that's your down feed that's going to go into the impeller housing. <clears throat> so this is what we're going to um, ground the unit to. And I'll go over a couple of um, different options with that. So basically, quickly again, we're using SDR35 with SDR35 fittings. I'm using an actual uh, vacuum system Y, vacuum system glass gate. And I actually used the Rockler uh, hold um, blast gate and it is really nice and it's just two screws out of the four in there it, it, it holds, holds really nice um, I'm, I'm going to try it on my next uh, uh, thing that I need to uh, put on so um, basically here's the arrangement so once you have it in again like I said you're going to add a little grease onto the edge of what you're going to insert so that you're going to push the grease on. I didn't grease anything, but just to go over that. And then um, what you could do is you could take some silicone and not, again, you can glue it, but if you glue it, you're stuck with it. Period. Okay. So um, a little bit of silicone around the edges and then some Gorilla Tape. And I'm just going to just rip a piece off basically to show you um, and you're just basically going to take the Gorilla Tape and give it a wrap. Of course, you're going to go around 360 degrees. And now the Ys are a little bit difficult. That's why it's very important if you get some silicone in this because it is very hard to get um, the tape around these two edges. All right. Um, oh, we're also going to go over cutting one of these too, one of these SDRs. So I left. So as you can see, this is like the end of the line. We're gonna um, we're gonna cap this line off, um, and then here, let me show you the caps. These were the two caps that I was talking about. This is a four-inch Franco cap. This is a three-inch Franco cap. Now, the four-inch Franco cap will fit perfectly over the hub. So let's just say I can do this. Let's just say this was your. We got a good yeah. Let's just say this is what you want to leave for future. So the Franco cap will fit right over this. You know, you got to give a little, little bit of persuasion, but as you can see, it goes right over it. Then you just tighten up the gear clamp. You can add some tape to it, and there you go. Now you have a, um, a future outlet. You don't need to cut a Y in. And then to remove it, I mean, you just persuade it back and forth a little bit, and it'll come off. If you happen to buy these black fittings that are made for the vacuum system, a three inch Franco cap. So this is the actual, um, this is the actual um, hub of the black fitting. So each one is the same, whether it would be an elbow, a 45, a Y, or the blast gate. A three inch will fit inside of the fitting. So just say for argument's sake, you had a 45 here. Now you're not going to do it with the SCR, it won't fit. The four inch will fit. But you can add, and that's what I have up there, it's inside. That's my last for future use. So it'll go inside. And then again, tape it. And then it's very simple just to pull right out. So it's a three inch or a four inch Franco neoprene cap. And this one, of course, each one comes with a gear clamp. This one I took off because it's you don't need it for that. Okay. Oh, and let me just show you what I talked about, those J-hooks. Now, I did not have any 4-inch, and neither did the supply house. So, let's just 
make believe this is the four inch pipe, four inch SDR. So basically these J hooks, as you can see, they have multiple holes in the front and on the side, comes with two serrated nails, and basically all you're doing is clipping them on. And now that, of course, picture, you know, 10 feet. 10 feet, you wanna have hangers every seven feet. And you also wanna put a hanger at least on either side of a fitting to give this. So you're bringing this up, you put your latch, you put your fitting on, of course, you're going to put straps and hangers going down for your um, branch, for your blast gate. Then you're going to continue. You may have more Ys. Put another clamp here, at least within a foot. Um, it'll give this uh, uh, Y stability. So here is those J hooks. Picture them up against the wall. Picture them going along your joists. Little bit of pitch. String a line. Put a line level on it, just give it a slight pitch. Put these up so that the actual string is touching the bottom. And then you know each one is now perfect with a tight, tad bit of pitch back towards wherever the direction of the vacuum system is. Okay, so that's, that's these. All right, oh, and those for your ask, here's my cigar today. All right, so. We have, um, we have our system, our piping in. You have all your blast gates in. You have all your um, fittings sealed. So now what you want to do is you want to ground this. Now, <clears throat> if you end up going out to buy a grounding kit or you can buy a roll 100, 500 feet, this is 18 AWG American wire gauge. It's uh, stranded, and I think there's six strands, all right? It's what I had left over. I think I bought 100 feet of it, and I used probably 50 feet on my system here. So that's it. Number 18, you, they, it does, they don't have 17, they, but then really you're going to get 18, 16, 14, and so on and so forth. But 18 is, is really the best. Um, stranded, not solid. You want more of a surface, so there's more strands for the um, um, uh, anti-static. Basically, what you're doing with these is you're making, a mini, you're making mini lightning rods that are going to um, transfer the static electricity back to the housing of the... Um, uh, vacuum and then the vacuum is already grounded and then that will then the static electricity will be dissipated to your earth ground in your house or your shop uh, off your panel you have a ground going out somewhere in the ground copper rod six feet down and that's where it'll end up going so what are you going to do well basically you want to start you want to start here you know I, I i like to start on the end okay so Let's just say we're going to start right here on the end, but I'm going to start about right here because we're going to cut. Well, you know what? Let's cut this now. Let's just cut it and get it over with. All right. So here, let's just get that camera like this. Let me just show you how easy this is to cut with a sawzall. All right. Not necessarily, you know, hanging here, but this is how easy this is to cut with a sawzall. volt Milwaukee saws all then my fingers are used to this just get the the stuff off of it grab your knife
debar it. And in this case, if you want to, you can use a regular SDR cap over it. A four inch gem cap will fit, but there is a lot of slop in it. So probably buck 75, put your uh, cap on the end of it. All right. So now let's just put a little tape on that so we don't lose it. Okay, we're going to start on the end. First thing I'm taking is a 3 seconds drill bit. And I'm going to start right on the end. I'm going to drill into the cap. Right through the pipe. Okay? Then I'm going to start with a blue stake on. And I'm going to crimp it onto. Now, if you don't have a special crimper for stake ons, you can use the back side of a pair of linesman's pliers. This is actually made for stake ons, but they're flat and some have like actually they're rough and that's made to grip the stake on to, to squeeze it. So I'm going to crimp my first piece on. Push it in so that you see a little bit of the wire and squeeze. Okay, I'm going to take, I'm using a number six screw that's about five eighths of an inch because you just want that screw to protrude a little bit into the um, pipe. I mean, it, it, it's not, again, it's not sewer pipe, it's not going to matter. If for some reason you got a little bit more of the screw in there, but it will matter. Um, and I got a mess here of wire, so let me just figure this out here. So we're not belabeling this a little bit. Okay. So, take my screwdriver. And make up my first, make the stake on face in the direction you want to go. <clears throat> I like to start on the end. Then you take your wire. Oh, let me just jump back here a second. Any of the vacuum systems that I've done when they were on the wall, I always put a three quarter inch block or I would just take, just say you were going to run 20 feet. I would take pieces of say half a three quarter inch plywood, cut 10 inch pieces and nail them on the studs. And now you could put anger any way you want to. So that's what I would do here. I just found the studs. I had the plate. I got my screws in the top. I got my screws in the bottom. All right. Also with it off the wall, it's very easy to fish the wire behind it. Okay. You want to start wrapping it. You want your wraps to be about eight inches. Okay, now I got my first wrap right here. I want to take a piece of Gorilla Tape. I want to take a little bit of denatured alcohol. Denatured alcohol is the best. Oh, and I found my glue bots. Clean off the pipe and it evaporates pretty quickly. So clean off the pipe. So I got my first turn right there. Put a piece of tape on it. Now it stays there. So now I gotta make a change of direction to get down here. I'm gonna drill now, when you drill in the pipe, try to drill a little higher. Okay? And then drill in the side here. Right through the pipe and right through the blast tape. Okay, you want to take your, a screw. You want to put the screw in here. Get it in there. Because what you want to do 
is you want to wrap it, go down and wrap it around. Wrap it. Wrap it. And I'm making a mess of this wire. Woo hoo hoo. Yeah, I think I got it up. I'm making a big mess of this wire. Give me a second here. There's the end of this stupid thing. Here we are. Okay, now I got it. Let's throw that there. Let me just square this up real quick here. See what I did wrong here. Look at this mess I made. I gotta cut it anyway, so I might as well just cut it and start with, start with it. All right, so now I'm down here. Get an idea of where your blast gate is. Cut just a little bit more. Take another stake on. Of course, take out the wire. Take another stake on. Now put a little bit more through because you're going to cut it. You're going to cut that sticking out. Another screw and screwdriver. Go around. And oh, I lost it. You'll feel it sticking through right in there. So the black table goes without a problem. All right, now take your other end of the wire, cut off the squirrel's nest that you put there, and then wrap it around this screw. Now you can use wire nuts if you want to. You can make a, uh, um, actually, if you notice I did it backwards. You want to go in the direction that you're going to be making up. You can use um, stake ons if you wanted to. Tidy it up by winding this around and then Continue with your wrap. Now, as you can see, I have a screw hole right there. Take another screw, and I already I kind of did a little test to see how it was going to go in. They go in fine. Come back around, wrap it. Wrap, wrap, wrap. You're going to keep going. Now, we're going to just hold that on with some tape. Okay, and then you want to that down so it goes it gets in all right now so now you get what I'm still you're wrapping all the way around you want to try to get these wraps about at least eight inches apart a little bit closer not a problem all right now the connection here you're gonna go down to where the motor 
in Pella housing intake. There's bolts around the intake. You could remove one of those bolts, <coughs> excuse me, and depending on what um, manufacturer, what size unit you have, you should be able to get a stake on in there. You can also scrape off a little paint and use a stake on to ground it. What I like to do, and you probably will find some of these on um, the more expensive vacuum systems. It's a grounding lug. So basically, let me grab a screwdriver here. It's got a quarter 20. This one, is, oh, I only have one size, but they make them in, they make them in used sizes. It's got a quarter 20 hole. It's got a stainless steel screw that when you loosen it, it loosens this actual bracket and then you put the wire behind it. So in this case, you're going to leave enough slack. So let's just say we're going to leave we're going to leave that much slack for now. And let's not trip on it. So you take your grounding screw, your grounding lug, and you put your wire through it. You can double it if you want to. Oop, my screwdriver. Tighten up. Now, on some of the more expensive, like the Feldler and the Laguna, you'll probably have one of these grounding lugs. See how it is? Then you're going to, you could remove the, a nut, the nut and bolt from the housing. Like I said, we're simulating a housing here. And you're going to replace that. To tidy it up, just wrap it back around. Now, you're going to say, <coughs> well, what if you, when you're going to move the machine to um, do the maintenance on it? Well, you can just slot it through and just leave it hanging there. Mine's in the corner. But what you can purchase is these stake-ons that are male and female plugs. So you can put your wire in there. So basically, you're going to I always like to put this onto the actual stake on, push the wire through, and squeeze. Now, what I would, what I use with these with different plugs is this uh, CRC 2-26 multi-purpose. It's it's a dielectric spray. So basically, I'll just give a little shot inside of the piece and I just plug it in and then you can see how easy it is to unplug once you get it in there that's it that's the actual and now when you do maintenance on the machine take off your hose unplug it Well, there we go. Pull the two halves apart, and of course, you know you're gonna before it goes in, you're gonna actually have it's gonna be wound down the hose that goes in. So these two ends, you can just take apart, leaving your ground lug or a stake on on the metal housing of your Impella. Uh, I think that's about it. 
So basically, start at the end, start with your first stake on, and put a screw about every eight inches or so. Your wounds all the way back, follow it back down to the blast gate. You know, if you want, you see here, you can add, if you want to add a piece of tape, you know, to make it look nice, just wrap it all the way around. <clears throat> Remember, it's the static electricity that's building up inside that gets, uh, gets picked up by the screws as a grounding rod and then sent back to the machine, back to earth ground. And that's it. All right, YouTube. I hope this was helpful. Um, again, I'm very glad that you got, you, you guys really loved that first video. Um, if I knew it was gonna be that popular, I would have done it sooner. So um, the uh, stuff as I showed you, very easy to cut. Now, uh, somebody asked a question about six inch. Um, six inch, you're most likely not gonna cut with a sawzall. You might, I mean, if you do, you might have to kind of scribe a line and then cut a little, rotate it, cut a little, rotate it. But what we do with six inch or eight inch SDR is we actually have roller stands, V roller stands, but you can actually do it out of two by fours, make V, and mark your pipe, take a circular saw, battery powered, um, fine blade. If someone's helping you, of course, it would be better, or actually it would be really good. Um, hold the circular saw right over the scribe line that you made and have him, you drop the saw in and have him rotate the pipe very slowly. And as you rotate the pipe in the direction of the cut, it'll cut the pipe. So you can do small cuts all the way around. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. As long as you get all the burrs off of it, uh, get any of the, um, uh, um, shavings, get the shavings out of it. You know, you don't want it all back into the machine. Um, you blow it out with compressed air before you make your last connection and then cap off, you know, keep your blast gates and keep, open them up one at a time, blow them out, get all the shavings out, especially if you can cut with a chop saw. A uh, chop saw leaves a lot of shavings. All right, YouTube. Um, again, I hope this was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'm looking here at a screw that I met, did not mention if you want to you can actually drill you can drill and tap it's a 1032 you can get them at home depot they're like packs of six the green ground screws they're 1032 thread you can tap the housing of your um blower of your vacuum excuse me and drill it tap it and then uh just Thread this in with a stake on, or you can just tie the wire around it, or one of these grounding looks, and just put it right on. And again, if you wanted to, um, well, I wound this up pretty good, but I think I can get it off. If you want to take this off, you just find all the little hairs. And then take your screwdriver, loosen the screw, and just pull it right out. And that's it. And then you can just wind it back up again, and it'll be ready to insert it back in today when you're done. Just remember, this is loose. Uh, if it turns 90 degrees, it will fall off. All right, YouTube. Um, my email will be below in the descriptions. If uh, you want a Mike's Woodshop sticker, again, send those questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Um, just send it to me, send me your mailing address, and I'll send you a sticker. Alrighty, again, if you like the video, please subscribe. Um, or if you like the channel, please subscribe. And uh, again, thank you for all of the subscribes, all the likes, and all the comments. Um, you all have a nice weekend, and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye now.